morning. It's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. So I hope you all enjoy the Bible study. This is Bible study, Friday morning at 11 o'clock. I'm just a few minutes late, but it's better be to be prepared, right? Um, I was charging my little speaker, and I just had to go get it, put it in. So we are starting um, today in Genesis chapter 26. Um, and we're going to read first. And uh, we're going to talk about Genesis chapter 26, verses 12 through 25. And we're, our discussion is on Isaac and his blessings from God. Um, now, we, I'll just start reading. If you want to read along, if you've got your Bible, we're going to be in Ch Genesis chapter 26. And um, I'm going to read the verses that we're going to review today. It's verses 12 through 25. It says, Isaac prospers, okay? So it says, Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great, and he went forward and grew until he became very great. And the, uh, for he had a possession of flocks, possession of herds, and great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. For all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. And the herdmen of Gerir did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Essek, because they strove with him. And they digged another well, and strove for that also. And he called the name of it Sitna. And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that they strove not. So this was the third well he digged. And finally they left him alone and decided they would let him keep this well. And he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And he went up from thence to Beersheba. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, I am with thee, and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he built an altar and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants digged a well. Now, that's the scripture we're going to learn from today. Um, and like I said, that's Genesis chapter 26, verses 12 through 25. So we're going to talk about what we just read. And um, it says the tokens of God's goodwill to Isaac was that he blessed him and prospered him and made all that he had to thrive under his hand. Okay, his corn multiplied. He had no land of his own, but he took the land of the Philistines and he sowed it. And God blessed him with a great increase and he reaped a hundredfold. Now that's a big deal. Can you imagine uh, when God is with you, how he could bless you that much that you would, that Isaac would reap a hundredfold? Not only that, but the time was very important because in the same year there was a famine in the land. And while others reaped, scarcely reaped anything, he reaped plentifully a hundredfold. 
Now tell me that God can't, that shows right there that God can make a difference in our lives with our blessings. If people were starving and their land wasn't prospering and it wasn't producing, here Isaac was in the same country and he reaped a hundredfold. So that should show you how much God can bless you when you're a special child and you belong to him. It says, um, see Isaiah chapter 65, verse 13, and it references, my servants shall eat, but you shall be hungry. Okay, so we're going to read that. It's Isaiah 65, 13, and it says, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Now, does that make you want to be a servant of God? He says his servants will eat, others will go hungry, his servants will drink, Others will be thirsty, and his servants shall rejoice, but others shall be ashamed. That's a good verse, isn't it? He also references Psalms 37, 19, and it says, In the days of famine they shall be satisfied. That is Psalms 37, 19. I'm going to read it right quick. Because these are very encouraging verses for a Friday, aren't they? Um, 37, 19 says, They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. His cattle increased, it says, and he had a great store of servants whom he employed and maintained. And it says for us to note for ourselves that as goods are increased, those are increased that eat them. Um, it says the Philistines had an ill will because they envied him. They envied what he had. They envied the fact that he was being blessed. And it says that is a bad principle which makes men grieve at the good of others. Now, we need to apply this to ourselves, y'all. It's a, a principle indeed which makes men grieve at the good of others, as if must needs be ill with me because it is well with my neighbor. They showed their ill will to his family by stopping up the wells which his father had dug. This was spitefully done, y'all. Because they had not flocks of their own to water at the wells, they would not leave the water for uh, Isaac and his herdsmen. It was terrible what they were doing. And they took two wells from them and filled them up because they said they were their wells. It says they did it contrary to the covenant of the friendship they had already made with Abraham. Um... It says they expelled him out of their country, and the king of Gerar began to look upon him with a jealous eye. Isaac's house was like a court, and his riches eclipsed Abimelech's, and therefore he must go further off. They were weary of his neighborhood because they saw that the Lord blessed him. Isaac does not insist upon the bargain he had made with them for the lands he held. Now listen to Isaac, how he responded. Now, most of us, if we were as plentiful as Isaac was, if God had blessed us with a hundredfold, we had herdsmen, we had servants, we had this huge um, estate, is what I would call it for us these days, and the king came to us and said that he was going to make us move, would not have been graciously, uh, we would have not acted graciously, but listen to how Isaac acted. Isaac does not insist upon the bargain he had made with them for the lands he held. 
nor does he offer to contest with them by force. But very peaceably he departs further from the royal city and perhaps to a part of the country less fruitful. Now this is a note for us, for us to apply to ourselves in our own life. It says, we should deny ourselves both in our rights and in our conveniences rather than to quarrel. A wise and a good man will rather retire into obscurity like Isaac here into a valley than to sit high and be the butt of envy and ill will. That's saying a lot, isn't it, y'all? This says he kept up his husbandry and continued his industrial, industrial, well, he continued industrious to find wells of water. So even if he had dug a well and they filled it up, and he dug a well and they filled it up, he decided to keep trying, and he dug another well. It says, though he was driven from the conveniences he had, he could not follow his husbandry with the same ease and advantage as before, yet he set himself to make the best of the country he had to come into, which is every man's prudence to do. He opened the wells that his father had digged, and out of respect to his father, he called them the same names which he had given them. In digging his wells, he met with much opposition. Those that open the fountains of truth, this is for us, those that open the fountains of truth must expect contradiction. The first two wells which they dug were called Essek and Sitna, which stood for contention and hatred. Now that, that kind of reminds me, this right here that says those that open the fountains of truth which is what we're doing today. We're opening the fountains of truth. We're opening God's word and we're reading it out loud and we're meditating on it and we're studying it because those that are Christians love God and we like to learn about what he has to say. Whether we like what he has to say or not, we know that it's best for us to apply it to our lives. Uh, let's say our prayers. Thanks for tuning in. I love each and every one of y'all. I pray for y'all, and I'm so happy to be able to share God's Word um, to those that want to listen. Um, let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, thank you, thank you for this Friday. We thank you for another day. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who came here and sacrificed and gave his uh, own blood so that we would have an ultimate sacrifice so that we could come to you freely and speak to you through him so that we could be saved in this age of grace. I pray, Lord, that if there's anybody on here that does not know you as their personal Savior, that they would come to know you. Um, I do have a good video on being born again, and I need to post that on Colored Valley uh, chit chat and on youtube and i'll do that lord because i know that it is a good message for those that aren't saved to know how to be a child of god um may you go with us throughout this day may you be with those who are lost those who are miserable lord in their heart and soul and need you to help fill that void may we love people everywhere we go may we, may we think about the lost and not just ourselves. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day.